Good morning, Monday on TNT. Thank you very much for joining us again. Hope you had a fantastic weekend wherever you are in the world. Now we do have to talk about the weather today. There's quite a lot of flooding around parts of Thailand. We'll get to that a little bit later on in the program. Also acknowledging that uh, it's been very, very wet down south. So we'll have a talk about that. Also a little bit of uh, contrary approach to what happened on Friday. Now we got the news about the, uh, the visa, the tourist visas. I'll go into that in some detail in just a moment. But uh, some of the publications have taken a slightly different tack on that particular story. So we'll get to that very soon as well. Also all the latest in the main stories from around Thailand and the region coming up today from uh, Studio 2 at TNT. Yes, we're here in Studio 2 in Bangkok for the week, uh, heading back to the south of Thailand on Thursday. But because of the time we record the program every day, it looks like we might be here most of the week. Nobody's going to be opening at uh, 7 or 8 in the morning just so I can come and yabber on uh, in front of the camera. Now, on Friday, there was the big announcements from the double CSA meeting, I think for some of us, uh, quite surprisingly, that they did approve an extension of the visa exemption program from a 30 day stay to 45 days and also the visa on arrival scheme from uh, 15 days to 30 days. Now nothing controversial about the tourism visas but another part of the story was that uh, there's going to be no double CSA or extension of emergency decree from October the 1st. Now this has become slightly more controversial because not all publications are reporting this the same way. That's a story there from the Nation Thailand saying that the double CSA and the emergency decree uh, won't be around after October the 1st. So we'll see the end of both of those at the end of September. The double CSA is the COVID task force that has acted independently from the Thai parliament. But the Bangkok Post uh, also printed a story about this and it's got a slightly different tack. It's saying that uh, he said the double CSA on Friday did not consider whether the state of emergency would be lifted along with the downgrading of COVID-19. Speaking after chairing the double CSA's Friday meeting, PM Prayut Chanucha says the agency has not yet considered scrapping the emergency decree imposed to curb the pandemic. So that particular part of the meeting on Friday, whether they are going to scrap both the double CSA and the emergency decree seems to still be up in the air. So more to come on that story. Moving on to other stories and this from the Patia News on the weekend, Thai police considering sub law for limiting the number of pickup truck passengers in back seats and cargo bed. So I'm not quite sure what a cargo bed is, we'll get to that in just a moment. But the story says that they're thinking about saying that there's going to be a sub law that there'll be no more than three passengers allowed to be sitting in the back seat of a pickup truck, no more than six passengers allowed on a cargo bed. What is a cargo bed? Is that like a truck with just a, a flat back on it? Anyway, they're going to limit a cargo bed to six passengers. Uh, I think we're also talking about some of these uh, trucks that perhaps ferry around the uh, well, mostly Burmese workers. Now sometimes I've seen 20 or 30 people packed into the back of a truck. Are they going to limit the number of people they pack into those trucks? I think that would be a very good idea. Uh, now they're saying as part of the story that uh, most of these pickup trucks did not provide proper seat belts. Let me say that all the people I've ever seen in the back of a pickup truck have never had any seat belts, nor is there a provision for seat belts in the back of those pickup trucks. Of course, most of them meant to be used to uh, carry bits and pieces around and tools and food and stuff, uh, not necessarily passengers. So that's just one of those Thai life things that you can't see really being unwound very quickly. It's been traditional to see families just uh, popped into the back of the pickup truck and heading down to the market or whatever they're doing. And uh, I can't see that really being reversed. 
and like the wearing of uh, bike helmets, I'm not sure if uh, we're going to see a big change to this particular situation, even though they're trying to change the laws. And along with the new seatbelt laws, if anyone was found violating, warnings or fines may be conducted depending on the cases, according to the Chief. To our next story today, and also from the Patea News, intoxicated woman bites off part of a tourist's ear on a BART bus in Patea. Sounds like a good night indeed. Let's see what happens with this story. Uh, if Patea City Police arrived at the scene after receiving a report of a Thai woman who reportedly jumped on a Songtao and attacked a male tourist by punching his mouth, giving him a headlock and biting off a portion of his ear before swallowing it. So there you go, this gentleman uh, not just uh, with a bite to his ear, but apparently missing part of his ear. The story goes on. They were, the people in the back of the, uh, the Song Tao, uh, this is interesting, they were too shocked to do anything to help him. The attack was unprovoked, according to the victim and witnesses. Apparently the attacker has been taken to a police station and she's being allowed to sober up before giving a statement. Uh, yeah, so sounds like a pretty good night out for the people there. Uh, one person missing part of his ear and it doesn't look like it's going to ever be seen again. Let's go to this main story on the front page of the Bangkok Post today and pressure mounts on PM tenure. This all coming to a head on Wednesday this week when an eight year term of the Prime Minister's tenure does come to an end, according to some people. It would be eight years since he named himself Prime Minister following the 2014 coup. Now, there are other people that think there are other dates that determine the start of the Prime Minister's Premiership. But let's see what's happening with that story. And we go to a reaction from protesters on the weekend. Uh, there was protests held, uh, obviously, there at the Democracy Monument. And the protesters, the Ratsadon group, out in force again over the past couple of days, trying to force this issue into both the public eye and put some pressure on the, uh, the Constitutional Court. They were waving around placards that were saying things like, pray to get out, make it end in eight years, and enough for an unlawful Prime Minister. So about 30 protesters there, part of the Ratsadon group. Also uh, a comment made by one of the Prime Minister's spokespeople on the matter. I found this uh, quite interesting from the Bangkok Post story. The Prime Minister is a soldier and a man of his word, said former government spokesperson Tanakorn. Well, whatever you want to say about the Prime Minister, he's now the head of a civilian government, a quasi-democratic government, if you want to describe them that way. And whether you want to describe him as a man of his word, I suppose is for the electors to make up their mind when it comes around to the next election, which will be held probably before March next year. This is Tim Newton today. Thank you very much for joining us and thank you to all the people that joined in on Saturday. I think at one part of the, uh, the broadcast we had about 301 people joining in, which was fantastic. I'm trying to rope in somebody to, uh, to sit in with me to help monitor the questions because it's very difficult to be reading the questions and trying to think of something intelligent to say. It's difficult at the best of times. So uh, trying to find somebody to help me do those Saturday live broadcasts because they're quite a lot of fun and an opportunity for me to try and answer some questions about the many and varied nuances of life here in Thailand. To our next topic, and we're talking flooding now, and two districts in Pechabun province face the worst flooding in 60 years. This story from the Thai PBS world and there has been quite a lot of rain in different provinces over the weekend. Here in Bangkok, it hasn't been quite so bad, although there was some rain on Saturday and uh, a few sprinkles late la last evening, but it hasn't been as bad as some of these places. So Pechabun certainly being flooded quite badly. And also another story from Thai PBS World, households below Chao Phraya Dam advised to move valuables to higher ground. So certainly the northern uh, parts of Thailand 
and the central provinces are looking like they've got some flooding heading their way. And anything that's happening up in central Thailand will be heading down the Chao Phraya to Bangkok at some stage over the next few days. So I'm sure we'll be bringing you the latest on any flooding and the results of that uh, here in Bangkok over the next few days as well. To the next story now, and this happened on Saturday night, this one from Phuket-Go.com. 16 taken to hospital after BTS escalator uh, accident in Bangkok. And the story goes on about 27 mostly students, uh, two men and 25 women were injured on Saturday night after passengers lost their balance and fell over on an escalator at the BTS Sky Train at the Surasak station. Now the Surasak station is between uh, St. Louis and Sapantaxan, which is down near the Chao Phraya River on the Salom line of the BTS. And this incident occurred just before 7 p.m. after a concert of many young students from the Bangkok Christian College. And uh, well, let's uh, see what happened with this. I found out about this, uh, as a lot of people find out about the news online as I was just scrolling through, uh, I think a Facebook feed. And a lot of people were saying, oh, the BTS should be sued for the incident. And it was all to do with the escalator and Thailand's engineering is no good. Well, the, <laughs> the problem was not the escalator. The problem was, in fact, the crowding of these students who were trying to get out of the rain. There was a sudden rainstorm at the time they were making their way uh, either along the streets adjacent to the Surasak station or actually trying to get onto the BTS. They all crowded onto the escalator at the same time. And it appears there were some 27 people on the escalator at the time. The people at the top toppled over or slipped and then a bit of a domino effect and knocked over all the people and some 15 taken to hospitals with uh, various cuts and abrasions according to the story. And the BT is saying that uh, they've already issued a statement saying the escalator was not malfunctioning and that the company will do its best to take care of all the victims. So a bit of a nasty accident there for the students who are coming back from a, a concert at the time rain, slippery conditions, and well, it appears all trying to get out of the rain at the same time, causing that incident on Saturday night. To some regional news now, and we're heading off to Laos, and it looks like the high-speed train there, which goes from China to Vientiane through Laos, has become the hottest ticket in town. Looks like uh, people are clamoring onto the, the new uh, high-speed rail, and really enjoying the experience. A lot of them taking the trip from uh, Vientiane up to Luang, Luang Prabang, which is a very scenic part of Laos, and usually that journey taking three or four hours, and now taking less than two on the new high-speed train. So great to see that uh, people are taking advantage of this new technology. And of course, we know that uh, this particular train will be eventually making its way down to Nakhon Ratchasima and then through to Bangkok over the next three or four years. But there has been many delays for the high-speed rail making its way from China through to Bangkok uh, through the last few years. But an uh, interesting story there, it's a video on the Straits Times. So if you'd like to see that full video about the, uh, the train, uh, just noting there on that particular story, uh, as of the start of August, the Laos-China Railway has ferried over 700,000 passengers and more than 1 million tonne of cross-border freight. And uh, we know that uh, it's been used quite a lot already for people trying, uh, like traders here in Thailand, to get goods from Thailand into China via this new high-speed railway. And it's been very popular uh, for things like fruits, and, uh, and vegetables. So yeah, it looks like the high-speed train has been somewhat of a success. So that story in the Straits Times. And to coconuts.co, uh, agents notch seven arrests and 268,000 Singapore dollars in seized drug busts across Singapore. Uh, the Central Narcotics Bureau says it arrested seven Singaporeans aged 28 to 41 in two drug busts last Wednesday. 
none were identified. This story from the weekend, not sure why it's taken so long for this information to come to light. A total of about 3.7 kilograms of heroin, uh, enough for 2,000 people for a week, according to the agency, was seized along with 14 grams of ice, that's uh, methamphetamine, crystal, crystal methamphetamine, 26 grams of cannabis, two grams of vegetable matter, and coconuts are assuming that's mushrooms or weed, and five unknown tablets, uh, some street value of 268 Singapore dollars. Are those people obviously facing the death sentence in Singapore for the trafficking of uh, such large amounts of heroin. That story featuring on the front page of the coconuts.co. And with that, we say thank you very much for joining us on today's TNT. Hope you've enjoyed just a quick look around at the main stories from Thailand and the region. And we do look forward to seeing you again tomorrow, probably in the same place, unless I can find something today which opens nice and early. I haven't had my breakfast yet, so that's where I'm going. Hope you have a fantastic Monday, and we'll see you next time.